Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the Funko Horror Classic Vinyl Figure Mystery Minis. And this is a part two to this review because originally I had looked at the first four figures I picked up out of these blind box items. And those were Ghostface, Pennywise the Clown, Hannibal Lecter, and Sam from Trick or Treat. But I have gone back and through scouring my local Hot Topic, scouring the internet, and the help of a viewer. Thanks again, Robbie. I have completed all of the sculpts from the entire Mystery Minis horror line. Now, there are a few figures I'm missing, and they're all variants on the ones you see before you. But basically, I've collected all of the characters. So, I've already reviewed the original four. I'll put a link below if you missed that review. But I'm going to catch up on the rest of them, and then we could say we've covered pretty much everything. First up, a character I've reviewed a lot of here in Outside the Box reviews, Freddy Krueger. I was a little bit disappointed in their choice of design with this figure because, well, I'm a complete nerd and I realized that this is the remake Freddy. He's got his brown fedora, he's got some dirt spots on it, the band going around, it looks decent. Definitely has some kind of burn texture on his skin, there's not a lot of paint to bring that out, but it looks okay. He doesn't have a nose, but none of these do, he's got kind of a scowling, toothy look going on there, the big white eyes that are trademark of the series. All right, going into horror nerd mode, you can see that the metal plating, the brass plating, goes all the way around his fingertips. And that only happened in the remake. All the other times there were gaps in it somewhere. It was basically a shell on the top of the finger with the glove underneath. So yeah, I've just gone to horror nerd mode and shown that, but it's still not bad. The glove looks decent. The sweater looks nice. Very bright red and green. He's has his other burnt up hand over here. And it's a little sculpted and painted to look burnt, but not much. He's got his dirty pants his black shoes. Once again, none of these figures are articulated, so it's all just what you see is what you get. Next up, we have Leatherface, and this is one of the larger figures like Pennywise was. He's pretty cool looking. I like the face on, but the face looks like they might have reused it from one of the Walking Dead figures they make or something, because it looks more like a zombie with the lips peeled back than it does a mask. There are some stitching pieces on here that kind of help the look, but these aren't painted. There should have been like a wash on them or something to really make them stand out with black. It's a decent face. I like it, but it's just a little weird. There's a spiky little hair back there. See on the back is some good detail with the strap for his apron and his little pockets. You can see his tie there, a little bloody dirty apron, and his chainsaw, which is really nicely done. I even like they put hair on his arms. That's a nice touch. Touch, but a pretty nice little figure. I like the design on this one a lot. Now this one does have one of the rare variants. This figure is two out of every 24 figures will be a normal leather face, but one out of every 72 figures will actually be the real bloody variant that's just covered in bright red blood. In my estimation, that is a repaint that's easy enough to do on your own, so I don't feel particularly inclined to go and actually find the rare one. I could just custom that up myself. Next up, we have our friend to the end. It's Chucky. I really like the design on this one. He has his bright red hair. A little flattened back, but decent looking. I like the scowl they gave him. It's cute little good guy overalls. It's lacking all the detail from the movie, all the little symbols and stuff on here, but not that big of a deal on something so small. He looks really great. I love that he has a little knife in his hand, ready to stab Andy or something. Very, very cute little figure. All these have really good detail. He has the little stitching on the back of his overalls in the pocket and all the little lines on the shoe and around the cuffs. I'm really impressed with how much Funko put into these. Now this one also does have a rare variant. This one's really rare. All these figures I'm showing you today, with the exception of one, are the normal two out of every 24 figure ratio. This guy's variant is one out of every 144 figures is the scarred up Bride of Chucky looking Chucky. And that is what I really wish I could get my hands on. I'm not going to pay the money people want on eBay for it. I'm not going to hunt through blind boxes because I'm probably going to end up spending more if I do that. But the scarred up Chucky is pretty cool. But it is the exact same figure we have here. Here, just with some added on paint and stitches to it. So I think I could live without it. Next up we have Michael Myers. And this one I like, but then I have a couple little issues with it. The mask is decent. This is basically what you'd expect William Shatner to look like if he was a mystery mini, I guess. I like the big black eyes. Almost every other figure here has white eyes. He has big black eyes, which fits with Michael Myers quite well. He has the slicked back brown hair. He's the 
blue coveralls. You can see the pockets are sculpted in, all the stitchings in there. And he has a bloody butcher's knife right there. More stitching on the back. And overall, I like this. I like the sculpt on it quite a bit, but the paint actually bugs me. I really could have done without the blood, mostly because when I think of the original Halloween, I think of a fairly bloodless movie. It was not a bloody film at all. And to me, Michael Myers with blood just doesn't match. I'd rather have a clean Michael Myers. It's a minor nitpick, completely a minor nitpick, but yeah, <laughs> very minor nitpick. I guess that's all I could say. It's, it's splitting hairs. And the other hair splitting thing with this one is that he does have blue coveralls. In the original film, they're green, but in the sequels, they are blue. So I guess we could just assume this is one of the sequel Myers. So that makes sense for the blood and for the coverall color. So I guess I'm willing to accept Freddy is a remake one. I can accept this is like a part four Michael Myers. Next up, we have Jason Voorhees. And this is one of the ones I was very excited to get my hands on. I really, really like this one. He's got his tattered up gray pants, black shoes, the green jacket with some like green slime kind of on it. That's a little weird choice. Maybe he's coming out of the lake and just nasty and gross. Black gloves on. He's got a little tiny machete here with some blood splatter on it. The back of his head just looks like a mess. His little hair is sticking everywhere. He's got the strap on his mask and the mask itself being the iconic. All three chevrons are there. No cut in the top. So this is just kind of a concept, Jason. Probably closest to the Freddy vs. Jason version than anything else. And once again, like the Michael Myers, Jason here has the big black eyes because he has the mask on. I like that touch. Really a big fan of Jason. This is one of my favorite ones. I'll try to rank these at the end, but I really do dig this figure. And once again, Jason does have a variant but this one isn't rare. This one, according to the package, is as common as any other figure in the bunch. And it is a NES-style Jason, kind of riffing off what NECA did with their Comic-Con figure last year. It's Jason with, like, the glow-in-the-dark hands and mask and kind of a dark purple body. So that's an interesting take on it. But I've seen on eBay, people are scalping the hell out of it, and I don't know if it's really rarer than it's supposed to be, or if it's a variant and people just automatically jack the price up on them. But it's a little disappointing that a figure that shouldn't be hard to come by is kind of made artificially rare and expensive. So I'm curious to know if anybody out there has found one in normal circulation or if it does seem to be rarer than the package leads us to believe. Next, we have Ash from either the end of Evil Dead 2 or the beginning of Army of Darkness. And another one I really like, Ash is one of my favorite horror characters. I think a lot of people are in that same boat. But I like the determined look he has on his face. He's all cut up on the side there. He has his black hair it's kind of messy. He's got the boomstick detailed right here in the back. And then all the straps for his whole mechanism is there. You can see the little ring that holds all the different straps splitting out from there, coming around the front, connecting at different places. It's got the chainsaw starter, nice spatter of blood, the ripped up sleeve, not too ripped up in the torso, but come on, it's a little mini figure. He's got his belt as well detailed, his brown pants with a lot of blood on him. I like how much blood they did on this figure. Very cool looking. And then of course he has his chainsaw saw stuck on his hand, or what's left of his hand, his stump, but he even has some nice detail in the actual blade here. There's actually a serrated edge to it. Really like this one as well. This is a very well done figure, and this is one that I'm glad is nice and bloody. That very much fits Evil Dead to me. Next up is a figure that is a little rarer than the rest of them. This is Billy the Puppet from the Saw franchise, Jigsaw's little puppet creature, and this figure is only supposed to be 1 in 72. Now, I found him, completely look at the draw out of the blind box, didn't have to search for him too hard. And it almost makes me wonder if maybe this one really is 2 for 24, and maybe that glow-in-the-dark Jason is 1 for 72 instead, but I guess we'll never know. Now, this one breaks the rules a little bit, and you can actually see they have eyes painted on him. I don't really know how I feel about that, but it fits the puppet, I guess. He's got the swirls on his cheeks, the big painted grin, the spiky hair coming off the back, the little tuxedo on. It's pretty well detailed. Little Mickey Mouse gloves going on there. It's not a lot you could do with Billy the Puppet, so it's okay. I've never been a huge Saw fanatic anyway, so not my favorite character choice. I would probably not have tried too hard to hunt this one down. It would have been relegated to, oh, it's rare, I'm not gonna bother getting it type thing, but 
because I got it randomly, I'm glad I have it. And last but not least of our new figures here, we have Captain Spaulding from House of a Thousand Corpses. And this is pretty well done, another creepy clown. We basically have two clowns and a puppet in this line, so definitely hitting the clown look a lot. It's got his little American flag hat, all the heavy makeup on with the big white eyes, little poof balls down. Now the pose he's in is very awkward. He's got his hands kind of spread out open back it's just kind of a weird gesture it's either him from the commercial like telling people to come down to captain spaulding's or he's got like the come at me bro look going on i don't know it's, it's a little goofy but then again it's a goofy character a lot of paint detail on him we can't really complain about that but it is fairly simple in other respects the back of it's very plain but no real complaints on this one just not a character i love i really do enjoy the character in devil's rejects but for being a sequel to house of a thousand corpses it might as well not be a sequel to House of a Thousand Corpses. And just for the sake of doing it, these are my top three. No specific order here, but Jason, Ash, and Sam are my absolute favorite of the bunch. It has to do partly with how well these things were executed and partly on character choice, to be quite honest. But we'll see how well the camera wants to focus on all of these figures at once. But I am overall pretty impressed with this mystery mini line. I kind of didn't know how to feel about it to start off with. I thought it had potential, but I thought it would also be pretty lame, but I've been fairly impressed. The sculpt on these things are relatively good across the board. The paint on some excels, and this is kind of bland on others, but they hit a lot of great, iconic horror figures, and that makes me really happy. It wouldn't surprise me to get a line like this from other companies and just get Freddy, Jason, Michael Myers, Leatherface, and be done with it, or to get some of the maybe cheaper properties, like get Billy the Puppet and Captain Spaulding. But to hit this many marks from this many different studios and ownerships and franchises, it's a really great Wave 1. It really does make me wonder if we'll ever get a Wave 2 because that Wave would either have to be some redos of some of these characters already in different poses, which I wouldn't totally object to, or to do some more classic horror, do Dracula, the Wolfman, that kind of stuff. But this has hit so many iconic 80s and 90s characters that it really feels like if they tried to do different characters from this, it might not end up doing so well and might be kind of relegated to pure B-listers, which I'd be happy to get, but a lot of other people probably wouldn't. Heck, we even have some B-listers in here. As much as I love Sam from Trick or Treat, definitely is a B-list character. But I am definitely going to give a recommend to these guys. Unfortunately, since I first started picking them up, it seems like all the Hot Topic stores near me have not gotten in a second case, and I haven't really seen any places getting in more of these figures. I really can't tell you where to get them now except for the internet. Make sure you check me out on Instagram, username outside the box reviews. Also check me out on Facebook, link below. And until next time, we're gonna be looking at horror figures all week long here on Outside the Box Reviews, so come back for more.